Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel Animate Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Today on the table, another Metal Earth model, another from the cat lineup, we have the excavator. So I've already done two cat models so far, there's five altogether, and this will be number three for me. The cat models are more complex, very detailed, a little bit challenging, but still fun to build. Let's see if this holds up to the same. Let's open it up, see what's inside, and put it together. The cat excavator. How many sheets do we have in here? And inside we have the two metal sheets, as to be expected. And it's only two, so I wonder, maybe this isn't going to be as complex as the others? Ah, let's not speculate too much. And we have two pieces of paper for the instructions, so that tells you something too. Let's open up the first sheet, starting with page one. The cat logo, Metal Earth logo, line drawing of the completed model. 360 view, we've got the QR code we can scan with the phone. We have a web address you can go to. Down below that we have one of the parts with an explanation of insertion tabs, fold lines, and insertion holes. Need on those pliers are helpful for assembly. This is true. Tweezers are helpful. Clippers are helpful. We have a legend when you see an E pointing at something that's pointing at the engraved side or section of that part. And e is pointing at a non engraved side or section. And this is an attention point trying to draw your attention to the way something lines up or something comes together or something important in building this model and getting it correct. Sometimes there's words that go along with it that explain why that's important, sometimes not. Blue circle, when you see that in the assembly flow chart at a connection point, is telling you to insert the tabs in the insertion holes and bend them over. The green triangle, insert the tabs in the insertion holes and twist them 90 degrees. And this is a little tip, pull and screw metal tabs 90 degrees to tighten. That usually helps. And then down here we have the two metal sheets. I'll just grab one as an example. Here we go. And we have all the parts and the part numbers pointing at them so that we can, so that we can find them on the sheet. We have a couple of parts here the same color. That is indicating these are the same parts. One of them is labeled. Here we have 48. This one here is not labeled because it is also 48. I have a couple of same color parts here. Here, there's actually three, it looks like. So that there are duplicate parts in a lot of these models, things that are on the same side and the same, rather than adding more numbers to this already crowded area, they color code them. And that I like that, it makes them easier to find. And then a lot of times in the assembly flow chart, if we slide over here to page two, we'll include those colors in those parts. For instance, part number two is green. That is, there's two of those, so that is one that It'll be a little easier to find because you just look for green over here. Although there are several shades of green. Yeah. We've got part one, part two, these come together. Part four or five. A little sub-assembly here to build this. It goes here. Six and seven add on here. And you just follow these arrows, bending, shaping, and folding the parts. Pay attention to the sub-assemblies and it all comes together. You get down to the bottom of two, you flip over for three. Page three, continue on, then over to page four, follow the arrows and continue, and then on to the next sheet. Inside we have page five, and this one looks like it'll go by kind of quick, and then page six, looks like it might go by, or at least start off quick, page seven. Add on, let's see, add these on and that and follow through and here's a sub-assembly for the track. And then page eight and you get to the bottom. You are all done with your model. Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers 
one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat sort of curved end, great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shape and rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. We've peeked at the instructions, got our two metal sheets, talked a little bit about tools, I've got some basics to get me started. Let's put this model together. I use the fine point tweezers to keep these folded over parts open just slightly as I lined up the tabs by keeping one of the tips in between the two halves. As usual, it helps to bend tabs to all point in the same direction towards the next connection. I found it helpful to bend these tabs up straight. It allowed them to go into their slots easier. I tried to keep things neat by bending the tabs down, but such was not a secure connection.
I use the engraved circle on part 19 where part 20 connects to to gauge the size of dowel rod I should use to shape part 20. Don't forget to push out the tab on the side of parts 25 and 27. It'll be easier to do so now than later.
the part 32 is a bit wonky looking because I initially curved it the wrong way. I did my best to bend these thin metal strips, but I am not so sure I achieved the shape desired.
Putting two large sections together like this is usually a one tap at a time sort of process. I spent way too much time trying to attach the track part the wrong way. I assumed the tabs went into the center slots in part 44, but it was only after considerable stubbornness that I realized the line of slots kind of on the upper side of part 44 was where the tabs were supposed to go.
In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality, I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. And I give you another cat to model the excavator with this neat little turning spinny top part. It's really neat that they pull that stuff off, off, off now and it adds another level to it. It's somewhat poseable. This model took about three and a half hours to build. It didn't quite, didn't quite feel like it took that long to put together. It was challenging, not overly so, but definitely had its challenges and things to overcome. But overall, fun build, especially if you like challenges, this won't particularly disappoint. And it looks really neat in the end. So what can I say? This one doesn't seem to be as complex or as intense as, say, the, the uh, large dump truck or the, the grader that I've already done. But it's not, it seems a little simpler, but it's not too far behind. And all these odd little parts it's like you know what is this going to make when it finally comes together when it finally comes together well there you go pretty neat i'll leave it at that i have the intention of doing more of the cat models in time as well as 
when the Freightliner models come out, I'd like to do those as well. Pretty much, I want to build them all. But, I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below. If you like these videos, please consider contributing to upcoming videos to keep them coming. Check out a uh, link to my Patreon down in the description or at the end of this video. Consider giving just a little bit to help out. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping up.